everybody else wants to lower their prarabdha. One who is on the spiritual path wants to increase the prarabdha, take the load, because we want it to be done quickly. Twelve-year karma, intense involvement is good enough to drop all that. If you burn all your physical karma, Calling is a twelve year commitment, and if you commit to this, your karma for this world will be taken care of. How do I get involved with my life, my sadhana, my kids, everything into this that the whole karma is taken care of? Karma means action. Action is happening on four basic dimensions of life body, mind, emotion, energy. When one takes up sadhana, spiritual sadhana, why certain things are adjusted for different people in different ways, even the same practice is given, we make it happen differently for different people. Because not everybody's prarabdha is the same bag of karma, it's different bags. Depending upon… see, let's understand this way, if you have to use modern terminology, prarabdha is like a software. It has been set like that. Now when you're on the spiritual path, we want to increase the size of our pra prarabdha. Everybody else wants to lower their prarabdha. One who is on the spiritual path wants to increase the prarabdha, take the load, because we want it to be done quickly. We don't want it little by little happening a whole lifetime. Whatever physical karmas we have, we want it to be done quickly. Whatever psychological and emotional needs we have, we want it to be done quickly, as quickly as possible. Some just want to skip the whole thing, then they will take brahmacharya, sannyas like this. They don't even want to get into it, they want to skip the whole thing. Others try to work it out fast, so that increase the volume of the karma. It is burdensome, but it gets over soon. So when we look at it this way, there is a certain amount of energy in every human being, it's different by internal, to put it in today's terms, a certain software is there within you, which allots a certain amount of energy for your body, for your emotion, for your thought, for your inner dimension like this. There is a certain allotment. There is somebody here who has to do lots of physical things for them to feel good. There is somebody else here, if they work for three hours, four hours, they feel like that, but their involvement is of a different level, but they cannot work like that. They're different types of people. This is not just by attitude. Some may, might have developed attitudes of laziness, that's a different matter. But actually, energies are made like this. So, when we put people to different kinds of activities, we're constantly observing where and how their activity is going. Most people think, I've done enough most of the time, okay? <laughs> this is a problem because they are… they're in market economy. How to do give less and take more? <laughs> Hello? If you go to the marketplace, if you went to buy vegetables, Mysore market you must go, it's a must visit. I <laughs> have spent so much time in Mysore market, you must go and see. It's a place to go. So if you go there, if you go there with hundred rupees or today maybe thousand rupees and you bring back two hundred rupees worth of vegetables home, people at home will say, you're a fool. But you went there with thousand rupees and brought two thousand rupees worth of vegetables by bargaining and bargaining and bargaining, that's it, oh, she's smart. So what is the principle of smart and fool? If you take more and give less, you're smart. If you give more and take less, you're a fool. Yes, that's a basic principle. So this is why this subjectivity and objectivity matters. In subjectivity, if you give more and ask for nothing, you're really smart. If you give less and want to take more, you make a bloody fool of yourself because you lose your life. 
what could have been a simple thing could have been a profound experience for you. You miss that simply because you're thinking, how, what will I get, what will I get, what will I get? See, this is happening, you, you've done shonya meditation. The shonya meditators know this very well. They sit like this, literally body is disappearing. Then you want to do something, you want to get enlightened that day. <laughs> All you get is numbness in your leg. <laughs> <laughs> the moment you try to take something, it's over. It's over. It doesn't even exist. Those who are always on that mindset, they sit, sit, this damn shunya, nothing happens. Yes, nothing will happen. Because the idea was to make nothing happen. <laughs> shunya means nothing, all right <laughs> So, in the subjective world, you must be done with your karma as soon as possible. Twelve-year karma, intense involvement, is good enough to drop all that. If you burn all your physical karma, if you sit here, you sit and moving. If your physical karma is not finished and you try to sit still, <laughs> in dozen different places it feels itchy for nothing. Nothing is there. Simply do like this, ant is going, no ant. Imaginary ants will go, all kinds of things will happen. Simply because your karma is not done and body cannot sit still. To make it sit still, you must be done with this. So I said, twelve years if you give yourself, it will be so done that if you sit, you will sit and move it. It's important. If one does not know stillness, uh, they miss life. It's like someone said, Man is ill only because he does not know how to be still. Yes, all the illness is out of that. Not able to be still means you have not managed your basic energies properly. That's all it means. It doesn't allow you to settle down, it'll...